Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back for another video. In today's video, we're going to talk about annotation tags like this. You can see a lot of information in the corners, every corner, but why do we need to know this? So, from my opinion, the reason for that is if you have a better understanding of looking at the different, okay, here's this course was used, that parameter was used, the TR, the TE, all this kind of information is very important to know whenever you want to look at the images, see if something is wrong, something can be even better, without need to go further into the parameter settings at the scanner. This video will be divided in two, part one, part two, part one, which is today, we're going to talk about on a simple 2D turbo speed echo sequence. And the next part, I'm thinking about going for the 3D because there's a little bit different information from a 2D to a 3D. If you're interested, stick around, I will show you. Shortly, my name is back again. I'm an MRI radiographer. In my channel, I'm covering things from basic to advanced MRI topics, tutorials, just like this one. If you haven't subscribed yet, considering doing so. All right, so I made a presentation for you guys. So let's go directly to the presentation. I will show you. All right, this is the annotation text, what I'm talking about. You can see this is just a simple PD, tube spin echo, fat sat in transversal plane. There's a lot of information in every corners and you can decide if you want to have that kind of information or not. You can customize it if you want to, but for me, I really like to have it all just to have an overview of what was used without need to going inside to the to the scan and open up the sequence and look at a different parameter card. So this was done on x 70 but this is very standard routinely from Siemens. It's been like this for years. So I first started with the older software now to the newer software, but still it's the same. If you know the old one, you will understand the new one. It's nothing different there much. Let's start simple. Let's start in the upper corner here. So this is the name. I just called it shoulders. If you have a patient with a patient name, then you have the, the birth uh, information. This is the date which was scanned. And this is the name of the sequence. So I really recommend you guys to name your sequence easily and name it more correctly each time. So usually I call uh, the weighted first, what kind of sequence, if it's fat sat and what kind of plane. And this in this setting here was used with the DRB and then on the right or left side. So that's the right side. If it's a T2, I would call it T2, tubus benedictal fat sat. If it, you have it a routine like, like that, it will be easier for yourself, your colleague to find the different sequences. If you need a T2, you know exactly, T1, you know exactly the name and it's easier to lock up. And uh, latest means that uh, if you do two or three uh, sequences like this, uh, it will name as the latest. This is the latest one you did, okay? And the study ID, that's the, the, the information from the patient and uh, the time there, which time did you do the scan? So I did a test on x 70 uh, I did a test where I did a timer, exactly the time when I started the scan. And if the scan takes two minutes, it will say uh, in this settings 12 o'clock because I started at 12. It will not say when the scan is finished, it will say when you start the scan. So it's just good to know if you haven't given contrast and then you forget to, to, to write in packs when did you give contrast and so on and so on. So let's start with this one, image number. Image number five, what does that mean? This means that in your protocol, or in this patient, you have already done five scans. Local one, localized is one. If you need one more localized, it will be number two. If you need a third one, it will be number three. Or maybe you start with a coronal, it will be number four. And this one is number five. So just for your information. And this one is the slices. So in this uh, scan I have right here is 32 slices. And the one you're looking at here is number 14. So the image number 14. Let's go for here. This is slice thickness. SL is slice thickness. So this is 3 millimeter. Distance factor. So how can you determine the distance factor? How can you tell what kind of distance factor do you use? Okay. You know, whenever you write zero, it will, of course, be close to each other, zero. But in the setting here, it says 3.0. So that means that you are using zero distance. What if you use, let, let's say, 10%, okay? So if 10%, you need to take 3 millimeter times 10%, which is 0 0.3, and you need to take 0 0.3 plus 3 millimeter, which says 3.3. So if you use 10%, it will say 3.3 there, which means that you know, okay, there is some distance uh, which factor which was used here in this sequence. If you use 20%, 
the same, you times it with 20%, it would be 0.6. So D3 plus 0.6 is 3.6. And if we use 4 millimeter, it would be 0.4. So it would say 4.4. So that's how that's give you a clue if you're using distance factor or not. Let's go to the lower corner here. This is a lot of information right here. It says uh, something about the TR, the T which was used. And uh, A1 means average one. Another information which is important is time of acquisition. This is important to know what, how long did it take uh, and so on and so on. So why does it say 40.07 seconds times two? Times two means because you have two concatenations, okay? If you have only one concatenations, it would give you the fully um, time of scan, which is around one minute and 20 or so. So if you take 40, around 40 times two, it would be yeah around one minute and 20 or so. So that means that the concatenation. So you can see that right away, okay, this sequence was optimized with the concatenations. The next one is the bandwidth. The bandwidth is right here, 2.201, uh, as you can see. This is where you control the bandwidth in the sequence card. And the next information you have here is P4, that's PAT4, but it doesn't say if you're using uh, Carpedinia or Grappa and so on. It just says the acceleration factor, 4. So it is one was used with the 4. And the next one here, this was uh, with the normalizer, was used with the pre-scan normalize. And the next one here is the DRS, DRB. DRS stands for Deep Resolve Sharp. DRB, Deep Resolve Boost. So in this uh, flicker card right here, you can tick on, tick off if you want to use the Sharp and the Boost and so on. So in this setting right here, I use both of them. That's why it says like that. And this is Distortion Correction 2D. You can either have it off, 3D or 2D. We use 2D all the time. Except for doing some special measurements where you need to to have fully 3D, like the brain lab sequences and so on and so on. The coil, the coil is important. So for this patient here, uh, or this test patient right here, we are using uh, the shoulder coil L. L means large. So we also have a SHS, which means the small one. So what if you use our different coils? You can see right here. If you're using the body coil, it will say it's here, one, two, three, that's elements, one, two, three. And you have the spine coil, from element two to four, that's further information to good to know. If you're using the head coil, you can see you have fully head coil right here, included the neck. If you're using the hand wrist, HW says element one to three, so all the three elements is activated. So this is good to know. If you get bad images, you can just right look in the corner here and see that, okay, we are missing some coils. We, I remember I was putting on the body 80 and now suddenly it doesn't say anything there, which means, it was not activated or it didn't work. And uh, here is a head uh, 30 channel. You can see anterior part and the posterior part. Next one is the, the restore pulse. The R stands for restore pulse. So in this case right here for this PD way we were using restore. So restore is now called on the new software, wrap up magnet magnetization restore. So it's on. Uh, another thing I just want to mention, this is a TSC, so it's a tuber spin echo. If, you, if you're using only the spin echo, it would only say SE, okay? And eight, the number 8 is the tuber factor. So we were using the tuber factor 8. If you're using 20, it would say it's 20. If you're using 5, it would say it's 5. So this gives you a clue on what kind of tuber factor you were using. And the next one is the flip angle. Flip angle was here 120, as you can see here, 120. So let's go for the next uh, for the next corner. So in this corner over here, it has something to do with the uh, with the resolution, right? The, the the field of view. So right here we have a resolution. The field of view is 150. So it's a fully 100% in all uh, field of view phase, base resolution and phase resolution. So this will be easy to do the calculation. And let me show you here. It says an I there. An I means for interpolation. So we were using with the interpolations. That's why the matrix looks very, very high. Looks like the double of 336, which is correct. We interpolated to double, right? And now you get the reconstruction boxes right there. But if you move your mouse up in the corner right there, it would say it's also reconstruction and acquired. So how can you calculate these numbers up there? You can do it like this. If we are 
taking this off, the interpolation off, it will say 336 times 336 right there without any I, okay? And up in the corner here, it will say 0 0.4, the double. And if we do the calculation, you can take 150 divided by 336, it will say 0 0.4 in both frequency and phase direction because you are having a phase resolution of 100%. If you have 50%, then you need to calculate 50% uh, of 336, which means now you have a rectangular box sizes, not square. Okay, so there's a lot of information here, but just have a clue, have a look. So whenever you know you did a resolution like this, just take a look and please check it. And if you change the field of your face, it will all change. Uh, the number will change here. And if you have a different phrase resolution, the number will also change there. So for me, it's important to tell you that if whenever you see an I, that means that it's interpolated. So this is not the, the real matrix, it's interpolated matrix. So bear in mind that if people are telling, I did a matrix of 512, very high resolution, but you need to keep in mind that you interpolate it or not. If, if it's a pure 512, then it's good. But if it's a 256 interpolated to 512, yeah, so you need to take that into consideration. Up in this corner, it just say which location, which was performed in the scanner and what kind of scanner, what kind of software. So we did with the head first supine. If you do with the feet first supine, it also say location there. But another important parameter for me is this arrow right there. That arrow tells you something about the phase direction, which is important. So in, in this uh, shoulder right here, we did a phase direction in AP. Okay. So if you're doing uh, right left, then the, the, the arrow will, will go the other way. So it just gives you a clue on what kind of phase direction do you use. So as extra information I just want to provide to you guys is because this one is also important, the flow compensation. Right here now, we didn't use any flow compensation, so it doesn't say on the images. However, if you're using the flow compensation, either read or slice, it will uh, give you a clue on what it is. So let me show you an example. In this um, image right here in the lower corner here, we did this with the read as a flow compensation. We were using the head coil, the neck coil, uh, the spine coil. And you can see this is a tubal spin neck coil, restore on, it's a 2D, it's RR. R means for flow compensation is on, and another R means that it was in the read direction. And we have here 24 uh, tubal factor, and then again, flip angle of 110. So let's see an example of the slice. If we are using a uh, flow compensation slice, it will say it's the same, but now R as R, flow compensation as means it is in a slice direction. Okay. Well, that's it, guys. I know there was a lot of information to, to cope here now, but remember, you can always rewatch this video or I don't expect you to remember everything by just watching this one time. It took me years to understand the different settings, the different annotation text. But it's just a clue for you to do a further reading and further understanding if you're interested in this. Because it helped me a lot through the years. Just looking at images and know exactly, okay, he was using this, 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 this. What can be changed? Maybe something, a uh, change of the tuba factor without going into the parameter card. Before we close up, I just have a question for you. Did you find this video informative? Please let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, do not forget to push the like button, hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you'll get a ding ding whenever new videos of me are coming up. Until next time, take care and peace out.